Did you know that the biggest data breach in the world, the Panama Papers leak, happened because of a WordPress website hack? Well, now you know. According to website security firm Sukuri, 94% of all website infections in 2019 happened on WordPress websites. And obviously, if your website or your client's websites get hacked, they lose a bunch of time, money, reputation, search engine rankings, and obviously, it's a lot of hassle to get all the content back on your website. To avoid these troubles, it is critical to secure your website. So if you want to avoid malware warnings for your website in Google, like I'm showing you on the screen right now, then I would recommend that you watch this video till the end. Hey guys, my name is Yuvraj and if you enjoy content about WordPress, then you should definitely subscribe to this channel because we produce these kind of videos on a regular basis. So in this video, I'm going to show you four different ways in which you can secure your website from hackers quickly and easily. So let's start with method number one, that is changing your WordPress's login URL. Now for most WordPress websites, the URL to log into the backend is usually website.com slash WP admin, as you can see on the screen right here, which makes it easy for hackers to guess the login URL and try to access your website's backend using brute force or any other malicious hacking attempts. So let me show you how you can change this URL so hackers will never be able to reach the login page in the first place. Inside your WordPress admin area, just head over to plugins, add new, and search for a plugin called WPS hide login. This is the plugin that I'm talking about. Just install the plugin, activate it, head over to the plugin settings from the plugins menu. And now you'll see two different settings inside the WordPress general settings. The first would be a login URL. You can now change your login URL and you can also change the redirection URL. What that means is if somebody tries to ac access the old URL that is WP admin, which I showed you in, in an example, then they can be taken to a particular page that you like. It's set to 404, I won't change it. Let's change the login URL. So I'll change it to secret area. As I see, as you can see, I've done already done it before once. So I'll just save my changes. And now my login URL has changed. So let's test it out by logging out of the website first. I'll disable the full screen mode so that you can see the URL. And as you can see, you can already see the secret area URL on the login form. Let's try to login using the old URL once. So I'll type in WP admin. And we reached the 404 page as it was mentioned or it was configured in the settings. Let's try to login again with the actual new URL. And now we see the login form. Let's log in by using my saved credentials. And I'm inside. So this is a great first line of defense against hackers. If they can't find your login page or login form, then they can't use brute force or any other techniques to try and guess your username and password. So this is the first step that you should use to secure your WordPress website. Talking about reason number two or method number two to secure your website is to keep your website up to date, updated or whatever you'd like to call it. And by update, I mean uh, keeping your themes and plugins updated. Now, if your website or your admin area looks like this with a bunch of updates, then you're just inviting hackers to try and access your website. Just to give you some context, the Panama hack or the Panama Papers leak or whatever you'd like to call it, happened because the website was using an old version of a plugin. Now, that does not mean that every plugin that is out of date or not up to date has a security vulnerability, but I'm trying to give you some context on uh, how a simple vulnerability in a, a small plugin that they probably ignored uh, caused the world's biggest leak to happen. So uh, I don't want that to happen on your website. So what you should do is actually keep all your plugins and themes up to date. Now, I'm not talking about every little plugin update is mandatory. Uh, for example, if the version is just released, that does mean you have to update on day one. But if you're not updating your themes and plugins for months and then, uh, then you're just inviting hackers to have uh, uh, go on your website and try to find vulnerabilities. And that is the primary reason or primary way hackers can gain access to your website. So what you should do is always keep your plugins and themes up to date. And for your trusted plugins, you can also enable auto updates, which is a recent WordPress feature. And what that will do is make sure that the plugin or theme, as soon as the new version is released, it's automatically updated and applied to your website. Talking about method number three, that would be to install a WordPress security plugin with a firewall. 
Now talking about firewalls, it's not actually a wall of fire. It's just a filter or a software based uh, mechanism to prevent malicious users from entering a website. Now it's not actually just used for websites, it's also used for secure networks. So just imagine a filter in between your website and the outside world and uh, the firewall will try to detect all the users that are malicious or trying to gain access to resources that they shouldn't be uh, trying to gain access to and keep those users out while allowing the legitimate users or just general users of your website in. And it's just a great way to secure your website. Now the easiest way to install a firewall on your website is to use a security plugin. Many of the security plugins that we're going to mention do have built-in firewalls. Just go into the plugin repository by heading over to plugins, add new and search for security. And you'll find a bunch of different plugins that offer great security features like WordFence, Jetpack, All-in-One, WP Security, iThemes, Malcare, and a few others. And the plugin that we recommend that you use is WordFence. We've actually had great experience with WordFence. So we'll install it and I'll show you all the different details or the options to configure uh, for security inside the plugin. So this is the dashboard of WordFence and how you will see the options. And this is not a comprehensive review of WordFence. I'm just trying to tell you the most important features that you should set up for essential security uh, features on your website. So let's start with the firewall first, which was I was talking about. And on first install, WordFence will tell you what the firewall does. So it will tell you firewall protects your sites from attackers. You can look at this uh, complete walkthrough of the features and uh, just understand what uh, WordFence actually does on your website. So it does provide you brute force protection. That means uh, users or hackers will not be able to guess what your passwords are by just repeatedly trying to attack or log in into your website and a bunch of other interesting options. So what you can do is control and configure all the options here and you can see the status of your current protection. So once you install the plugin, it will be in learning mode. That means it will be trying to figure out what kind of users you usually get on your website. And probably for the first week, it will be in learning mode and then it will automatically activate the firewall. So don't worry about that. The first week is just for learning, but you have some brute force protection and some real time IP protection, which you can enable. That means if you know uh, from certain locations, you get malicious users. So if you know that traffic from certain IP addresses or certain countries is usually the ones trying to hack your website and you don't even serve users in those countries, then you can probably block that IP range or even block that country specifically inside the settings. And you have some bunch of other rules. So this is the firewall and basic settings. Let's look at other settings, which is the scanning options. Now scanning is similar to what you would do on your computer. You have antiviruses installed. So this is, you can assume that this is the antivirus for your website. And what it'll do is try to scan your files for infections and certain types of code or code snippets that can have or cause vulnerabilities on your website. Let's move on to the login security options. So WordFence recently also launched a, a login security feature, which is called two-factor authentication. And we've already done a complete video on two-factor authentication. If it's not already live, it will be soon. So make sure you're subscribed to actually check it out. And what 2FA uh, does is actually add one more layer of security to the login page. Now, apart from all the security features that I mentioned, like 2FA and other features, there are also some interesting features inside the firewall itself that I want to talk about or I should highlight so that you can take advantage of that. So when you're inside the firewall menu or firewall options, just scroll down below and find you'll find these options on the screen. And talking about the next option, which is the brute force protection. This is one of the key options that I wanted to highlight with this section of the video. So brute force is usually when uh, hackers try to just guess your website's passwords by trying uh, thousands of passwords in a minute. So here you can limit the number of password attempts that any user can have, and that will just, uh, completely stop brute force attacks from happening. So you have some options to configure it. Uh, first of all, it's enabled by default and you can log the user out after a certain number of attempts. The default is set to 20, but usually a lower limit like 10 or under five is even more secure. And also lock out after how many forgot password attempts. So many times malicious users will try to uh, reset your password by gaining access to your email address and they'll repeatedly try to set a password reset attempt. Again, for this setting, something under 10 or even something under five would be pretty secure. So uh, these numbers, uh, number of lockout attempts and number of uh, password attempts, how many attempts under what time period or what time frame uh, the, are these numbers calculated for? So the default is actually four hours, but I would say you can set up, up to probably one hour. So any user who tries to log in 20 times or tries to reset their password 20 times in an hour will be logged out. An amount of user or amount of time a user logs out is also set to four hours, but you can actually increase it. So based on this, let's set, uh, maybe set it to a six hours. So any user who tries to log in uh, or tries to reset a password 20 times 
within an hour will be logged out of your website for six hours. And you can also set this option for Im immediately lock out invalid usernames. So any user who tries to guess a username on your website will immediately be locked out if you enable this option. And just below that option, you also have the option of blocking IP addresses of users who try to sign in with certain usernames. For example, you can block usernames like admin, user1, user2. So any user trying to access or gain access to your website using these common usernames will immediately be blocked. So these are some interesting uh, WordFins options that you should definitely configure and they'll enhance your website's security even further. And this covers the primary method of adding the firewall and other security features on your website. That is method number three. Let's talk about point number four, which is installing a web application firewall on your website. Now we already talked about firewalls and we installed the plugin in the earlier step to install a firewall on our website, but our web application firewall, well, lives on the web. Think of it as a CDN, but just a firewall or the functionality of a firewall in living on your network. The functionality of the web application firewall is essentially the same. It protects your websites against hackers and malicious attempts, but the difference is that it lives in the cloud. So what we're going to do is use a service that provides a web application firewall and the service is Cloudflare. Now there is no easy way in which I can explain the web application firewall to you. So what I'm going to do is just log into my account and show you the essential settings that I have set up and also the options you have to set up security or a web application firewall with Cloudflare for free on your website. Let's log in. So I'm inside the Cloudflare account and the security settings for a particular website that you add to your Cloudflare account will be found under the firewall settings. And as you can see on the screen right here, these are just some of the activity logs on the screen of all the firewall rules that have been implemented on certain visitors coming from these particular IP addresses. Now, if you want to create new rules, you have two options to do so. You have managed rules, which are available in the pro version or a pro account and you can upgrade to the pro account and you'll get managed rules created by Cloudflare so you don't have to create or manually filter the traffic that you don't want uh, coming to your website. And these are just the benefits you'll get from Cloudflare pro account. But for this video, let me just show you what uh, rules you can implement or create inside a free account. So those rules will be found under firewall rules. So inside the firewall rules, you'll be able to create five different rules. And based on that, the traffic coming to your website will be filtered out and presented with security challenges that you can implement within these rules. As you can see on the screen right here. So one is a JS challenge, or you can also call it a capture challenge. And once you create a capture challenge, you will be able to see how many people or how many actually IP addresses were presented with the challenge and how many were of them were able to solve the challenge. So right now for the last 24 hours, the CSR for this has been zero, which means 78 IP addresses were issued the OO challenge and none of them were able to solve it. And most likely that is because it was probably bot, bot traffic or it could have also been malicious traffic. So that's one way to keep hackers away from your website. And the second challenge that I've created is a country blocking challenge. So country blocking is quite a handy feature. Uh, just for example, if you have a local website or a local business website and you serve customers all over just your country, you can technically block visitors from other countries around the world. Now it is helpful, but you can go overboard. And if you block a lot of countries, sometimes you'll also end up blocking good bots like Googlebot and other search engine bots that actually are legitimate users for your website. So be careful if you implement any kind of country blocking on your website. And that's it with all the firewall rules inside Cloudflare. Now, obviously this video was just about the basic steps that you can take and they'll obviously secure your website to a large extent, but we have a comprehensive blog post on our website, wpastra.com, which shows you all the detailed steps on how you can secure your website much stronger than I showed you. Now that does not mean that uh, the security steps that I showed you don't make your website secure. They actually make it very secure. But by following the steps given in the blog post, you will harden your website security even further. So make sure to check the blog post out. I will leave a link down in the description of this video. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to leave a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel if you're interested in learning about WordPress, marketing, website building and similar topics. You were listening to Yuvraj from Brainstorm Force and I hope to catch you in the next video. Till then, take care and stay safe.